Okay, if you're sniffing, sneezing, clearing your throat a lot, mm -hmm. like I've been doing. I was going to say, this one right here <laughs> has been struggling. <laughs> you are not alone. It is spring no. allergy season. Yeah, so the other day, uh, Dr. Megan Shepard got in touch with... Uh, no. <laughs> she probably could have, though, from uh, Shepard Allergy joins us now to talk about how to get relief and feel better. And yeah. I, I think that's one that's of the things... That's what we all want to know. And maybe because it kicked in so early this year. I mean, we had people in February yes. who were talking about this. Uh -huh. It's, it's right. extremely early, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Now, 10 years ago, if you would have thought that you would have pollen in February to that degree, it, you know, that never would have been seen. Right. So mm -hmm. climate change is a, a real part of this where we're getting warmer days mm -hmm. earlier. Yeah. And so the trees are releasing more pollen and it's releasing earlier and longer. So mm -hmm. the allergy season for spring is definitely a lot worse than what it used to be. It's not in your head. Yeah. Yeah. We're not just dreaming <laughs> it. Does that change right. it throughout the year? Yeah. Then? Does that mean that, you know, June and July, does it, will everything now be altered it can. time wise? It can. It typically follows a pattern where trees, at least in this part of the country, trees mm -hmm. come out in spring and yeah. then in early summer, like May through June, that's when grass pollinates. We typically get a little bit of a reprieve in July. Okay. And then August, the weeds kick up. And then, of course, mold is year round, but worse in the yeah. fall. Okay. Wonder. So you kind of mentioned what the big triggers are pollen, the various tree, grass molds. Yes. The usual sun. Suspects, I the guess. usual suspects. Uh -huh. You can also have allergens that are year-round and not just seasonal. So dust mite is a really big trigger for a lot of people. Uh -huh. And then pets, of course. So oh, cats, yeah. dogs, that kind of thing. And there are actually even larger animals and smaller animals like horses and, mm -hmm. um, you know, like hamsters, gerbils, that kind of thing. Those right. all can cause allergic rhinitis. So Even those little... Even those. Tiny little... Mm -hmm. Yep. Huh, little roads. Yep. You know, okay. you wouldn't think about that, but that's that's something that... Uh, Horse is a big one. Yeah. That is. Yeah. Now, you have an allergy shot. It's a big, long word. Is it intra... Well, I'm going to let you do okay. it. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, what we do is something called intralymphatic immunotherapy, okay. and for short, we call it eyelet because that is a mouthful. Okay. And it's a new type of allergy shot. They have studied this method since back in the 70s, starting with vaccines. But mm -hmm. when you do regular allergy shots, what happens is that the shot introduces the allergen. Um, into your body. Usually it's done in the fat of your arm and you wait on immune cells to then take those allergens to the lymph node mm. where the lymph node makes healthy antibodies that are non-allergic so that when you okay. see that allergen you don't have symptoms. That's okay. the goal. So what we do with intralymphatic immunotherapy is we skip the step and we literally put the shot directly into the lymph node and we do it on one of the lymph nodes here kind of oh, around your hip huh. and believe it or not they're right below the skin surface and so we're able to reduce that allergy shot burden mm -hmm. from three to five years down to only three shots over the course of two months. Oh. Wow. Yeah, that's not that's not bad at all. There are, there are mm -hmm. other treatment options as, available as well. It's I think we live in a time where you really don't have to. I remember growing up and people would just right. suffer greatly. Right. There's no reason to suffer like that anymore. Right. No, there are multiple options for immunotherapy. Some are more convenient than others. That's what I went with when I opened my new practice. I wanted convenience. We're all busy. Right. Mm -hmm. So I wanted people to be able to get in and get their treatment and then get out and hopefully not yeah. have to come back for that. Mm -hmm. um, but there are all kinds of medications and things like that. You can use things that are over the counter. Of course, you can speak to your doctor about it and you mm -hmm. can come see an allergist like me <laughs> if you okay. would like yeah. for that as well. Yeah. So lots of options. You don't have to suffer. Um, are there things that we could even be doing um, that would be preventative? Things that maybe I've always heard, you the know, wash, and things yeah, like that, wash yeah. your pillowcase or wash your hair before you go to bed. I've heard things like that. Is there a truth to it? Right. For spring allergies, there actually is a truth to that. And it's not a fun truth because, you know, mm -hmm. as soon as it gets warm, we all want to open up the doors and sure. windows and yeah. let the, the air in. Right. And so trying not to do that and being yeah cognizant that that okay. is going to let pollen into your home. Having a HEPA filter, air filter in the room where you sleep, you can do it for your whole house, but a lot of the time the room where you sleep is where you spend at least a third of your time. Yeah. Okay. And doing um, showers when you come in, washing your hair. You know, I'm going to say it, it does throw off hair washing day for females. You're going to you're, you're you want to do it possibly it every day. During the spring. Off your body. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, making sure that you wash your clothes as soon as you get home, remove them, put on clothes that haven't been exposed to yeah. pollen. Because okay. we're getting close to that time period where you'll notice a, a, a haze on, on top of things like picnic tables and cars and things like that. Mm -hmm. right. And that goes in your hair, in your eyes, yeah, everywhere. everywhere. You can get everywhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. If someone would like to come 
come in for a consultation, mm -hmm. find out a little more about your allergy shot, mm -hmm. uh, or any other kind of tips for a checkup, what's mm -hmm. the best way to contact you? So my office is on Route 60. I always say across from the pink elephant. Everybody uh, knows where that <laughs> is. Diagonal Yellen Huntington there, mm -hmm. or in the Barbersville area. Uh -huh. My office number is 304-733-3333. And I can also be found on my website, shepherdallergy.com, which also has more information about the types of immunotherapy that we offer. And we would like anyone that has questions to give us a call okay. and we can talk them through it and get them in and see if that's something that they want to do. And even if not, there are other things yeah. that we can right. do to get you feeling better. One right. way or another, you can get some relief. Yes, one way or another. Yeah, yeah. and don't think you're that. out of the woods just because you've gotten to a certain age. Allergies can kick in <laughs> yeah, anytime. Any age. Unfortunately, after 50 or whatever. Unfortunately, yeah. I say that all day, that there are more allergy, more adults developing allergies than ever before. It oh really is a real problem. Wow. Okay. Well, Dr. Shepherds, thanks yeah, so much thank for coming. You. It's great information, yeah. especially right now. Mm -hmm. Thank you.